What's going on guys? Chuck here with another awesome Blu-ray purchase. And if I've gotten this out on time, happy Friday the 13th. Or happy Friday the 13th Eve, depending on exactly when I do get this posted. Now, judging by the introduction, you can pretty much be assured that we're talking about the new release from Arrow Video, the 4K of Friday the 13th from 2009, the remake, obviously. Now, my history with this film is very, very limited, honestly. Uh, I did see it when it came out in theaters. And I've only seen this only seen it two more times since then. Um, the first time being the, or the second time I should say, being the when it came in the uh, Screen Factory box set from uh, was it 2020? I think it was or 2000? No, yeah, 2020 was the big. That's when it came out, um, and that was the first time I saw the killer cut, and I have not watched it again until just now <laughs> after getting this version here. Um, of course, this was, I believe, the last of the major um, horror remakes. You know, obviously, starting with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, then uh, I believe Rob Zombie did his Halloween. And I think Nightmare on Elm Street actually would come out uh, the next year in 2010. I remember that. I remember the years right. And of course, 2009, you had the Friday, Friday the 13th. Of all those, honestly, I remember being in the theater. I remember seeing, liking the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake really, really well. I hate. I hate <laughs> Rob Zombie's Halloween. You know, um, those are just I, I I just don't care for them. Um, and I'm Realm Street one. I've only seen it one time in the theater, and I don't, I remember not. I don't know my thoughts on it are kind of. Um, I don't really have any thoughts because I don't remember too much about it. Honestly, I remember coming out being kind of bleh about. It. I remember there was things about it I I thought they could have done and didn't. Uh, with the Freddy character, but it was just kind of, just, it missed. But the Friday the 13th one, when I remember coming out of theater thinking, okay, this actually feels like they were trying to do Friday the 13th. Maybe not succeeding quite, you know, um, successfully, but I could feel like it was trying to be there. Um, again, that was the first, my first take. The second time I watched it, uh, on the Screen Factor box at Blu-ray, I remember thinking I just wasn't really impressed. Um, I remember it was being dark too. The movie was very, very dark, and just the characters were just not. I just did not care for them too much. Um, but again, I was coming off of not seeing it, and what actually so the, about what it almost ten years in between uh, viewings and. Um, Watching it again this time, and I, I don't know, maybe it's growing on me because I actually was more invested into it this time around watching it. I don't know if it's the 4K or maybe I'm just looking at it differently or going with lower expectations every time. I don't know what the case may be, but I did. I found myself more engaged in it this time around, not hating on some of these characters as much as I did previously. Um, and just a lot of it, I, I kind of, uh, found myself liking more than I initially did. Now, granted, this is, I think in some cases they, they're trying a little too hard with the, trying to, you know, with the Friday 13th, um, template, if you will, mostly with the gratuitous nudity. And that's, I know you're saying, Chuck, you have a problem with gratuitous nudity. No, I don't have a problem with gratuitous nudity. But I really feel like it was almost too much, you know, that that's even a thing for a film like this. I mean, you know, the Friday 13th movie is, of course, known for TNA. But I don't feel like they really shoved that in your face as much as, as this one does. Really trying to, you know... And, and when it was, it was more planned as a joke, I guess. Um, take Jason X, for instance, than the, you know, in some of those scenes, especially the holographic camping scene. Um but this one, I don't know, I feel like it was just like way too much. It's just way in your face in this, you know, this overextended sex scene, uh, which is supposed to be played for laughs, I get. But it just, I don't know. It just felt too forced, if that's, if you can even believe that. It's it's weird. <laughs> um, the tone of it is definitely, you know, you can tell it's really giving, it brings back that menace uh, tone. And it just, it, you actually have a sense of dread. Um, in the film, you know, they're really trying with that. And, um, to his credit, Derek Mirrors is a great Jason. I really, um, 
wish he got to do this more because I thought he made a really great hulking, uh, scary, and very intimidating Jason. And that's kind of a long line of very good Jason, you know, actors. I think Derek Mears definitely, you know, did the did the, the character justice in you know and playing him um, a lot differently than the other uh, Jasons, obviously, and really making the character his own. If you can, you know. Do that was you know a stuntman in this kind of role, but I, I which I think is possible because you know I think every you know stunt actor who's done Jason throughout the years is really you know put their own mark on it and made Jason their, their Jason their own. You know from you know Richard you think Richard Rooker, uh, C J Graham, uh, um, oh my gosh I'm drawing a blank on Ted White <laughs> and of course Keen Hodder all these guys. Uh, they all, that's why they're memorable as Jason, because they all put their stamp on it. And Derek Mears, Derek Mears really does a great job with that. Um, so he definitely deserves to be commended for that. Um, the cast is, the only really standouts to me are obviously, you know, Jared Padalecki and, um, um, oh, uh, Oh my gosh, <laughs> Daniela Panabaker. <laughs> That's it. It was right there. Um, of course, this is 2009, so Jared Padalecki was right in the middle of the early years of Supernatural, which is becoming a big hit. And it's interesting because at that exact same time, the My Bloody Valentine 3D uh, remake was coming out, starring his co star, Jensen Ackles, so, in which I, I really I thought it's cool they both you know got these kind of roles at the, exact, you know, at the same time. You know, rewatching this now and seeing Jared Padalecki, I'm like, that's just Sam Winchester. Then I got to thinking, wouldn't it have been interesting if they just went full on and they were able to get Jensen Ackles in here and instead of making this whole clay brother thing, what if it had been a supernatural Friday the 13th crossover? Wouldn't that have been something? You had Sam and Dean coming into Crystal Lake <laughs> trying to uh, check down his, you know, his weird disappearances and have the cross paths with Jason. That could have been fun. That had been the you know the crossover to end all crossovers, um, you, know, you know, and then maybe they jump over to the Valentine's Bluff or whatever <laughs> for my buddy Valentine. I don't know, um, but it been interesting. But like I said, rewatching it, uh, I really felt more into it. I really en I enjoyed it a lot more. It's like I said, the more I watch it, the more it grows on me. Um, whereas before, it's like, and now it's kind of okay. This is enjoyable, and it, it didn't feel as the last time I watched it, it really felt like a slot to get through again. I think, remember the film being just so dark, I couldn't really see anything. Well, the 4K changes that completely because, you know, the, the, the picture quality on it is great. Uh, I can really see these. It, it, Friday 13th, the, the 2009, it really is a dark film. They, you know, there's a lot of night shots and they're just dark. But again, with the 4K, it really brightens those shots up without overwriting it so it still feels like night so it's it's you can see what's going on which is what i'm trying to say which is really good i think that really helps with uh being invested in, in getting more into it um uh, i'm you know i always have issue with how they kind of crammed you know so much into i guess you know you say kind of fridays one two three in here um i was really the, the whole extended prologue is kind of and actually, I kind of like those characters that prologue more than some of the characters in the main feature. My not visitor as Pamela um, Voorhees is interesting. It's kind of weird that you know, Nana would. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's unexpected, I guess. You know that you would see her do this small role. And of course, I don't know if how many people are familiar with Nana visitor. Uh, my, I am primarily and only I really seen her in is you know her uh, seven years on Star Trek: Deep Space Nine as Major Kira, then Colonel Kira. And one episode of Night Court. <laughs> um, but yeah, she does, does the cameo as Pamela, which is interesting. Um, and then the, the whole Jason's weed field, I don't know, it's, it's marijuana field. <laughs> which, I, you know, there's a, lot, I, I there's a lot of jokes about that when it came out. But really, I don't even think he, that's not even an issue. He's just it's a territory period that just happens to have pot that everybody wants to come get. And so they're barging in his territory, um, which isn't the same as the original where it's basically people trying to open his camp and he's killing off counselors for that. He's just killing people or invading his turf, 
which is an interesting different twist if you're new remaking you know, you do it the same but different and that's kudos to that because now you've got this survivalist jason you know as opposed to just you know this near supernatural kind of uh, being or whatever uh, he's supposed to be in you know the original series of films now you've got who is basically you know more uh human if you will but he's definitely a survivalist he's you know he's setting traps he's thinking he's doing more and he's brutal he's very very brutal which is again an interesting take on jason and credit Derek beers for that um so yeah going back and rewatching friday 13th 2009 i gotta say my thoughts on like i said have improved um and again the, the 4k watching the 4k is a definite way to get that improvement because i think this does make all the difference um and so let's take a look at this so here's the slip and this is a really nice slip from arrow and again this was a surprise that arrow released or got this um this film you know this title i guess it was not thing that just came out it was expe unexpected it was going to be this film but it's a really nice release they did really uh, justice with it this is a great slip uh slip cover i was saying the hockey mask portion is kind of embossed and you see it's kind of glossy there this is flat with the uh tater sack <laughs> and you got the missing you know uh, split in the middle, which is really nice. The black and the colors offset is really good. Um, of course, your back, all your special features is a two disc. You have the theatrical cut and the killer cut. It's strictly both are 4K, which is nice. Um, here is the reverse artwork with that great poster image. And this looks really good with the black case, I gotta admit. This is nice. <laughs> and inside, you got your goodies. Let's see, here's the theatrical cut. And then the killer cut. All your special features are on the theatrical cut. And let's see, I haven't really dealt into this too much. So let's take a look what we got here. We have a greetings from Crystal Lake postcard. An actual postcard that could be sent out. Just a flyer for Arrow. Um, this little booklet. Maze of Tunnels not made by Hitchhikers. What well, is another interesting thing is a little underground labyrinth to help them get around everywhere, which is kind of nice, you know, something else that kind of grew on me too. Um, but you got a nice little color booklet, all these great features. I guess I, I really like Danielle Pan Panabaker in this film. I like Danielle Panabaker. I, I haven't really seen her a whole lot. I remember seeing her in uh, Piranha 3, or was it Piranha 3 Double D? <laughs> uh, which is not a good movie, um, but she was fun in it because she's always fun. Um, and that's something I'll probably get to eventually in my checking out 3D films. But of course, she's also most well known these days for being on the Flash TV series, playing Killer Frost. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a nice, nice little book. And of course, we have the Obligatory arrow poster. <laughs> and we have the new art, which is really cool. And on the back, you've got that very haunting image. I do like that a lot. So. There is all of that. Now, what's why well, I wasn't really sure I was going to pick this up. What made me get this? Well, besides being the fact it's, it's 4K, I mean, I still was like, eh, do I really want to? I mean, I do have this movie already in that Friday Thirteen box set. However, the big thing, if you're not aware of, is and here's the Friday the Thirteenth from the remake from the box set. If you're not aware. This is not a new disc. Um, in that box set, you know, a lot of his films were re remastered and uh, repressed and all this stuff, with the exceptions of Freddy vs. Jason and the 2009 remake. These were basically the exact same discs that were in that New Line released themselves. They just had a whole, whole stacks of them and they gave them to Shout Factory, Screen Factory to 
put in these sets. They gave you know new artwork and new packaging, but the disc is exactly the same. So all the same features, same so nothing new. You know, that's kind of the downfall that this exact same disc that you got if you bought the killer cut uh blu-ray this is the exact same thing it's just in this case whereas this actually like i said it is a new 4k master um and it is included with a whole lot of more special features plus the special features that are included on here so let's talk about those which unfortunately like i said i just finished watching the movie i just got this yesterday I haven't had a chance to go through the, the special features, so hopefully that's something I'll do. But there's some really good stuff on here to check out, so let's read it off right here. Um, obviously, this one is a theatrical, theatrical cut, um, and it has a nice uh, 5.1 DTS set, which is a great. It sounds really good. Um, let's see. You have a brand new audio commentary by director Marcus Nispel, a uh, brand new audio commentary by writers Mark Swift and Damien Shannon. Brand new interview with director Marcus Nispel. A brand new interview with writers Mark Swift and Damien Shannon. A brand new interview with cinematographer Daniel Pearl. Uh, a killer new beginning. An exclusive video essay about why horror fans shouldn't fear remakes. What 2009's Friday the 13th remake gets right, and why the film series or film serves as a perfect template for future franchise remakes by film critic uh, Matt Donato. That's something actually that sounds kind of interesting. I really want to check that one out. Uh, excerpts from the Terror Tracks trivia, or Terror Trivia Tracks, excuse me. Uh, the rebirth of Jason Voorhees archival featurette, uh, hacking back, slashing forward archival featurette, the seven best kills archival featurette, deleted scenes, original teaser trailer, and TV spots, and electronic press kit, image gallery sets, so all stuff. Um, after the little documentary, everything on is basically the archival stuff from, you know, the original Killer Cut uh, Blu ray. So you're. Getting definitely, this is definitely the upgrade, and this is the better version than what this is. You got a lot more special features, you know, several audio commentaries, interviews, and cool things. And plus, again, an image, the 4K, it looks and sounds wonderful. Um, it's definitely an improvement, and I really think you should check it out. If you've been on the fence about your feelings for Friday the 13th, 2009, as I once was, uh, definitely check this out. If you're, you know, if you're 4K capable, check it out. I think you'll actually, you know, get a better uh, appreciation for it. I really do. Once you kind of, you know, you get away with all any preconceived notions or whatever, preconceived notions, and enjoy it. And I said it's the the image of it, being able to see it more. It, it's just going to, I really think you'll enjoy it more. I really do. And maybe not. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I know I did. I was pleasantly... Uh, pleased and surprised by how much more it resonated with me and I enjoyed. Um, so that's always a plus. Okay, so that's it for this Friday the 13th special. One of two. Um, hopefully, well, I know my you know other one has already come out uh, on Friday the 13th. Um, again, I don't know if these are coming out the same day or if I'm going to stagger and make this maybe just on Thursday the 12th just to be different. <laughs> Um, not sure, but I do have, you know, another great, uh, Friday the 13th video that's, uh, posted or will post. I won't spoil it in case this is, you know, before then, <laughs> um, but it'll be a lot of fun to check out and I recommend you do. Um, so if you enjoyed this, click thumbs up, share, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the 2009 remake. You know, did you see it? You know, you're, are you a fan of it? Um, or did you get the 4K and then did it change your mind a little bit on, you know, whatever your previously thought? Did it improve your viewing of it? Um, or just say hi. I'll always take hi. So until next time, this is Chuck saying I will see you on the other side. And happy Friday the 13th.